Hello and welcome to DG Garage. Today we're going to be installing this hitch on this 2019 Nissan Kicks. All right, we're going to jump right in here and go over what needs to come out first before we can even start getting this thing in. Uh, we got to get rid of the emissions canister here. We have to unhook the exhaust uh, line uh, bracket for the muffler. And we have to remove this heat shield here, as it is apparently going to need to be trimmed. So let's get started on that. Okay, so the instructions for this kit, w kit which is, by the way, is a uh, Kurt 11563, say that the evap canister bolt is a 10 and you only need to remove one to get it out. Although th that's a lie, this is actually a 12. Really call that out either. It's definitely another one. Okay, so in the end, they weren't wrong about the bolt being only one holding it in. Uh, the other bracket at the back actually you just shift the evap canister forward a little bit and it comes right off. Okay, so there's actually two exhaust brackets we got to remove one in the front and the one in the back that I showed you earlier. So we're going to give a little shot of lubricant in each. I'm even using a silicone lube that's not uh, har harmful to the uh, rubber or the metal in this case. Now we can try to work these out. Oh, actually, top bracket's the easy one. Oh, that was easy. All right, let's see about this one. Okay, so it's definitely the upper hangers that you want to work with. I didn't even lube these and they're coming off way easier. There we go, we now have one low hanging exhaust. All right, next is we're gonna remove the heat shield uh, using these speed nuts. A lot of these you can just do by hand. They're not really on there at all. Oh, I was wrong. Out that side. What about this one? All right, looks like I'm getting a wrench. Okay, so assuming that yours are like mine and only one of them wants to cooperate, you're going to want a 24 millimeter socket. And that'll let you get them off. Again, no wrench required, just by hand.
and the heat shield is out. Okay, so the next step, once you have the heat shield out, is to cut a 10 inch by 2.5 inch cutout into the heat shield in this position. The image in the uh, included instructions is awful. I actually had to go online and quickly uh, download the color version so I could actually see, because trust me, you can't tell what, what way to orient it when it's like that. So, I got my angle grinder with a cutoff disc in it. Should make quick work of this. There we go, nice and quick. All right, so I'm gonna quickly go over what's next and show you where the mounting holes are. So on the driver's side of the vehicle, the mounting holes are uh, to the right and left of the bracket for the EVAP canister. This one we don't need to do anything to, however this one is the one where we're going to be feeding everything through. So uh, we need to make some modifications to this and according to the instructions that is to widen it in this direction. So take, another, take a bunch off here, take a bunch off here, and make a, a total one inch width um, oblong hole. Much the same story over here. This is your rearmost mounting hole here, and that's the one we gotta modify. So we're gonna bust out the die grinder and uh, start making changes. Okay, this took way longer than it's going to appear on a video. Um, there's no point wasting all that uh, memory card space on uh, me working away at this. Turns out, looking at the instruction sheet, as far as I can tell, is actually more you wanted to enlarge it front to back. And uh, they didn't really talk about it at all about uh, enlarging the width of it, but I could not find any way that going further forward to back was going to get me any closer to being able to do this which is essentially being able to poke this bolt up into that spot where we're going to use a fish wire to s pull it through here and up into this side. Now, along with that also comes a spacer, which itself fit much earlier. That's going to be pretty easy, I think, overall. Um, but we're going to see if we can fish everything through now on this side. And then if that works, I'm going to do the same on the other side. I'm not going to bother putting that on video because it's just boring and tedious. And I know I'm going to be cursing a lot with that EVAP canister right there. All right, so depending on how good a job I did on enlarging that hole, this could easier be, either be really easy or really difficult. So, you know, I go in through the front hole, the, well, the rearmost hole first with the fish wire. Feel around for where it is there. Got it. There we go. So we're going to throw on the brace and we're going to thread a bolt into the fish wire. Just like that. And 
Now comes the moment of truth. I'm gonna shove that guy in there first. And I'm gonna pull our bolt through. That's in. Get. Oh, there we go. And down. That was easy. So would you guess what? I forgot to hit record. So these actually went in really, really smoothly. I'm going to leave it here. I'm going to leave the fish wires in place because we do not want these pushing back up into there under any circumstances. And we're probably going to leave them in place while we lift up the hitch into place because the last, last thing I want is to lose one of these bolts up into the frame here. Uh, now, because I forgot to hit record, I think I'm going to go back to grinding the other side. And I'm not going to show you that because that's just a lot of boring grinding and then I will try and hit record the next time when I'm actually doing the fishing on that side so you can see what I do. Okay so I'm pretty sure I'm recording this time and I'm starting to run out of battery on my DSLR. Let's see if I can get this done quick. So I'm going to do the rearmost hole first. Throw our fish wire up in here. Feel for it to come over this side. Guide it with your finger down. Then we're going to throw up our support bracket. And we're going to thread on bolt. And we're just going to pop that support bracket into the frame. Bring them on down this side. Then for the other side, we're going to do sort of a reverse. I'm going to throw on our support bracket, thread in our bolt, and then we're just going to guide them up into that enlarged hole. First the bolt. And drop them down. And there we go. The bolts are in place. All right, so my SLR ran out of juice, so if the rest of this uh, footage is not as great, that's why. So according to the instructions, the next step is to reinstall the heat shield. And we're gonna get that in place. And then hopefully the camera will be charged up enough by then to show how I'm gonna throw the hitch in here. Alright, so to get this in here, I'm basically going to try and use my body as a jack in this case, because this is a fairly low car, and this hitch is not too heavy. So, let's give that a shot. Feed my fish wires down through the holes in the, in the hitch. Same over here. I don't think you guys can see on this side, but uh, it's cramped under here. Okay. Try and lift into position. see how on earth you can keep the heat shield and the hitch. This just seems ridiculous. Yeah, there's there's literally no way that's gonna work. Like it's just there's no clearance here. 
there's literally no way this can work. I don't even think you could put the heat shield over the hitch. Because then you'd have to cut here as well. Oh. Alright, try this one more time without the heat shield. this part. See now because I got the fish wires in place still I can actually get these on and not have to worry about accidentally pushing the other ones up which is a huge advantage right now because this one I almost pushed back in. getting the core work out here. Ugh. Like I'm basically doing a plank and using my stomach to hold this thing up at the moment. fully supported now we just got to get a torque wrench and tighten these up so before I get out of here I just want to highlight quickly how bad this is that you, the clearances are that you simply can't get this heat shield back in like it's not happening you're running up against this entire bracket here there is zero way with this sweeping curve design in here and with the hitch bracket coming so close, I can't even get my fingers up in there to the body of the car. It was honestly never happening. So I don't know. I'm gonna look into further into that further and see if I can find any anyone that understands why on earth they would say to cut that for clearance when it's just not happening due to the design of this. Um, but. For now, we'll leave it as is. We don't really need that shield. This is going to sort of do some of that job. And uh, we'll let it be for now. So, the instructions say to torque the hardware down to 59 foot pounds. So, I got my torque wrench set to that. We're going to get that done. Uh, then, we're, all we have to do is rehang the exhaust, uh, zip in the
I swear, this just keeps getting better. The hitch causes a clearance issue with the EVAP canister. I think uh, the only thing we can do is loosen this back up and see if I can shift this over a little bit first. Unfortunately. That give me enough room? No, just barely. Just barely. Might be able to get him. Let's hope for the best. I gotta see if I have, a, if I have a, a shorter extension. This just doesn't work. All right, found one that might work. I just got to get the exhaust hung again. So there we have it. Exhaust is back in place, EVAP is back in place, and we have a fully installed hitch on this 2019 Nissan Kicks. Now I'll apologize for all the wind probably in the video. It's a really windy day out here today, and I do not have a proper microphone yet. But it looks like a pretty nice install. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I think as I said in the beginning of the video, mostly going to be using this to, uh, for a bike, bike rack and towing a small 4x6 trailer. Uh, probably never going to get much over a thousand pounds. The Kicks doesn't really have a tow rating, but uh, that's really just because no one wants the tow rate uh, cars this small. But in Europe, I mean, compacts, subcompacts, tows, light trailers all the time, so I'm not really worried about this one. One fun little problem though I did find was that the drawbar, which I had installed in, a, in the rise position for my Volt, can't actually, in the rise position, go all the way in place to lock it. So I'm going to have to convert that to a drop, and I'm hoping that works out with the height of my trailer. Uh, but other than that... So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I hope you found it useful in terms of learning how to install a uh, hitch on a 2019 Nissan Kicks. Uh, whether or not you have a Kicks or not, this is still pretty relevant to um, most vehicles. The install techniques are pretty much all identical. Um, but like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Oh, so, sorry, I forgot one thing. And you're probably thinking you need trailer wiring to actually be able to pull a trailer. And that is correct, but that is not here yet. That should be arriving maybe Monday, Tuesday. Um, I'll probably put it uh, in, a, in a separate video, that installation, because that's just another nightmare of stripping apart different parts of the car to do, but uh, we'll get to that one later. See you guys.